I was just reading an article talking about how crazy popular RVing is during the, uh, the pandemic. So apparently I was a little bit ahead of the curve buying this motorhome two years ago. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, apparently a very good um, activity for families who want to escape the, uh, the confines of their house and don't want to feel like they're in prison anymore, yet still maintain that social distancing. We all know you can't get on airplanes or stay in hotels anymore, so uh, having an RV is going to be a very good thing going forward. Unless, of course, the, uh, the really good thing happens and they develop a vaccine or uh, some other you know, major breakthrough happens and we can escape the coronavirus. But for the way that the future is looking, um, this is going to be with us for a while. And so an RV is a very nice thing to have. So again, one more thing, adding fuel to the fire, just making me stoked on this build. And I've made some really good progress this week. So let's just jump right into it and we can see what I accomplished. So the front and the back of this motorhome both have this ceiling trim piece made out of um, vacuum formed polystyrene. And uh, the back panel has been removed for, geez, like a year. It's been sitting in my garden shed, uh, just sort of collecting spiders, waiting for me to get to it. But uh, this piece, uh, I should have removed at the same time, except I didn't because of this challenge right here. Getting these nuts to break loose where, uh, you know, you can pull the, um, the sunshades down to get this piece off is apparently a massive challenge and uh, you know there's there's a lot that can go wrong here so let's see if I can win this battle and get these broken loose. I do have to say this motorhome project is a lot of fun uh, because I never quite can predict exactly what it is I'm going to be doing. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, thinking about it and maybe doing a little research on the internet and every step is a challenge in its own way. The guy that I bought the motorhome from uh, reinstalled this headliner. He put this new felt headliner and it's it's pretty nice. Um, it's a shame I have to get rid of it. But what he did is he overlapped the uh, the vacuum formed polystyrene with the new Luon that he installed and he put all these screws. So I got to undo all of these screws, take down this whole sheet of Luon probably to that seam, drop that just so that I can get this out. This slides under the um, the rib the structural rib for the roof. And so what needs to happen is all these screws at the front need to get uh, unscrewed and then the whole thing drops out of the front and sort of slides out so that it can slide out from underneath this. The problem is I've got two screws which are like sort of rusted. This one right here and this one right here. The nut is, so whatever, whatever it's held up there, they're just spinning in place and they have to go. So, um, yeah, I guess I have to drill out the screw heads. They're stainless, so, oh, what a pain in the butt. Little hot shards of metal falling on my arm. Put my long sleeve shirt on in 95 degree weather. Uh, let's try again. The ceiling piece here needed to come out eventually anyway. I needed to um, repair that big old crack right there, get the uh, silicone, God, somebody, why would you try to seal this piece from, from weather instead of sealing the outside? I don't know what the previous owner was thinking, but uh, I also need to sand off the rust and repaint the whole thing uh, in a nice gray paint, which is kind of going to be matching the color scheme inside of there. So I had to take this off anyway, but there's a reason that I did it today. I need to disconnect these uh, wires that go to the uh, the running lights up on top there. And these are just, uh, you know, pull apart connections, which is nice. And also, you guys remember this uh, this bolt here, which I screwed down? It's, uh, it's perfectly easy to unthread it. It just comes out by hand, but you know, I need to access it from inside here to get that out. And now I should be able to just pull these um, these light fixtures off in preparation for painting. I'm trying to get this piece off right here, just this. And you can see there's a seam right up there for it. So it should come off rather easily. Unfortunately, um, you can see it overlaps. There's a lip here that overlaps the, uh, the panel back here but it overlaps and it underlaps. So then in order to get this panel off, you have to take that panel off. But how do you get that panel off? In order to get that panel off, you have to take that panel off and then loosen a hidden screw behind this trim piece right here. <laughs> and then that will slide back and you'll be able to get all that off. They say these 40 year old motorhomes are like onions and every layer that you peel back 
reveals more problems and that is the case for me right now. Look at all that disgusting mold happening in this corner. So this would be, uh, you know, where the front of where that trim piece stopped. And so the water was leaking right down here inside the wall and ending up rotting it out down there. So I think I found the source of that leak. You guys remember from a few videos back where I had the water dripping in from behind the rear view mirror. Yeah, look at, this is that, another one of those, um, what should I say, craftsmanship issues. Yeah, there's a hole to the outside. That silicone, which is meant to be plugging that hole, completely is not in the hole. So that was just, you know, wide open for water to seep in. And that's where this damage at the front is coming from. For context, this is what that hole should look like. You can see a little daylight there where the wire went through, where I pulled the wire out, but for the most part, it's, uh, it's plugged up. Right, so let's talk about these side dash pieces. You can see I've got this one removed and it wasn't the easiest thing. There's these screws up here at the front that are kind of tough to get to. Look at the rust spot. So I was lucky to get those screws out. They were kind of mm, almost seized. And here on the other side, I have one last screw to get to. It's the, of course, the most forward screw and it requires that the drill or the screwdriver be at that angle. So I cannot get onto that screw head uh, with any kind of good bearing. I tried to do it um, with just the bit. I did some fancy shenanigans to try to get a good angle on it and it's, it's well unseized in there so it's not coming out. Now, how on earth did they get that screw in there? And then there's even another one farther up, but that uh, holds the front of the um, of the dashboard. It's not holding this. It's not holding this trim piece in. So these screws clearly were installed before the windshield was installed, because they they're vertical. So you can get to them from outside the coach when there's no glass here. So apparently, in order to get the dashboard out, I'm going to need to remove the windshield. Now. Uh, I don't want to remove the windshield yet, and I do need to get that side panel removed, so I've had to buy some more tools to get this job done. This little right angle drill attachment, which cost me almost 20 bucks. So, this should solve my problem. Can you guys see right there how there's sort of a bubble in the reflection? That's supposed to be flat. So that's what Jim Bounds calls chipmunking. Chipmunking of the body. And the solution is to shoot some screws in here underneath the trim. So if I reach under here, I can actually feel the gap between um, the things that are, not, that are supposed to be mated and joined together. So we're gonna cinch that gap back up tight using these big old drill and drive screws that I've had in my possession for years. They came off of some door hardware package back when I used to install doors for a living. So what we're gonna use, we're gonna drill through the uh, the metal frame on the inside and just, you know, connect the two. And that is why I needed to remove the plastic panels from here because the screw protrudes through and I need to cut that off flush because the plastic panels touch this metal right here. Put three screws in and you can see the ripples that the three screws have introduced into the side. Look at how bad it is right there. So, yeah, I mean, I don't like it, but it is definitely uh, something that seems like it needs to be done. So far, I've only used the pre-existing holes for these drill and drive screws to try to get rid of this chip monking. And the obvious solution here is to drill some more holes and add more screws. So I went down to my uh, local bolt supply place. You know, it's a shop that most cities have them for, um, for construction guys and you know specialty hardware and they had they had these crazy drilling drives so uh, yeah I'm gonna probably add two of them in between each of the um, the current screw holes I think that with like I don't know what eight screws along this length I think it should appear reasonably straight and uh, I think it'll be a lot better well that uh, has certainly made things better to add uh, two screws in between each of the previously existing screws um, but we can, we can see that we're still getting rippling, still pretty substantial. Now, um, it's getting interesting because, like for instance, there's a bubble right there, which is darn close to that screw head, so it's not like it's perfectly divided between these two screw heads where the bubbles are appearing. Um, and back here, uh, we can see that the, that the rippling, or I'm sorry, the, the chipmunking has been transferred to this area, which is really bowed outwards now. So, 
Yeah, I've got eight more screws for this side that I can use on this side and still have enough for the other side as well. So I think, <laughs> I don't know, I think I might do it. Add one screw in between each of these. So that's a lot of screws. I'm just worried now that I've basically made a perforated seam ready to tear. Structurally speaking, it's just sort of weakened it in a nice straight line ready to just break off. You know, I think I'm just going to accept this the way that it is. Uh, the ripples aren't too bad and it might equilibrate over time and sort of uh, smooth itself out. That's my hope. So it is what it is. I don't want to weaken the, uh, the fiberglass anymore by adding more holes. You see way down there in the back, that hatch that's missing that covers the propane tank? That's this hatch right here. And it was clearly driven over a curb at some point. It's hanging on, it's doing okay. It's flexible fiberglass, but we got all kinds of rock dings and we have this damage to fix. This one is what I pulled off of that other motorhome in the field last year, year before, whatever, long time ago. And that whole motorhome had been sideswiped at some point. So this damage here also had kind of been hit. So we can see the, uh, the you know, we're down to the fiberglass here. We got some gel coat damage. And then on the back side, um, see this is what the fiberglass should look like. And wherever the fiberglass is cracked and, you know, I should say, you know, suspect, or no longer at full strength is where it changed colors. So I need to maybe fill this with more of the of the body filler uh, or do something. But it doesn't have to be that. It's not structural. It's just decorative. So it doesn't have to be all that strong. And then up here, of course, I've got this crack. So there's a lot of um, sanding. I got to remove some um, some good amount of material here first. And what I'm going to do is use this wire wheel. This was the Harbor Freight wire wheel. And just go to town. Open it up, get it ready for an application of some of the, the Bondo, well, the body filler. And where I need some strength added, I'm going to be using some of this fiberglass mat. So that's the plan of attack. It always surprises me uh, how impressed people are when I show them the body work that I've done. Um, I, don't, I don't know why uh, a lot of folks who are otherwise, you know, not afraid to take on projects are, uh, you know, pretty impressed by bodywork. And, you know, we all played with clay as kids, so I don't know what the intimidation of, uh, you know, of body of bodywork is. It's just slow motion sculpting. It's just kind of being an artist. There is an artistry to it. So, I mean, I guess if you never sculpted things or drew, you know, with a pencil, if you don't have any artistic talents, if you're just sort of a gearhead who likes to wrench on motors or something, I can see how you wouldn't have that skill set. But I think most of us kind of have the innate built-in skill set just from, from being a kid and, and playing with mud or whatever it is, you know. Now, I do have to say the hardest thing about it is getting the mixture just right uh, on the Bondo. So uh, you can see that little chip that I have right there in the middle of the screen just sitting there, the little green chip. And that's, uh, you know, that was a really good mixture, and I saved a, a chip just to color match it. So, you know, the, the hardener is slightly different color than the, uh, than the actual body filler itself. And so, um, you know, the two combine to get you to a color. So yeah, if you've ever mixed pigments, like for oil painting or something like that, then that's really no challenge there either. Um, and of course the cans do have like an instruction set for how to get the exact right mixture. I think it's like 20 to one or something, 40, 50 to one. I don't know what the exact ratio is, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's doable. It just takes a little practice, um, but you shouldn't be afraid because the worst thing that happens is you need to sand a bunch, you know, or maybe I guess if you didn't mix the uh, the mixture well enough, you might have to like pry it out or, you know, sort of scrape it out because it's just too soft to sand. All right, we're looking pretty good on this. Just a couple more coats, I think, and it will be ready to install back on the motorhome. You can see I just have to sort of fill this rough spot. I gotta do a little bit more patchwork here on this corner. I forgot about that. And uh, yeah, same story here. And there it is, fully installed. Now you can see this corner, I had to sort of trim it down, shave it down a little bit. And that's because that as it opens, it gets really close to colliding there. So it actually rubbed, and so I had to just shave it back so that it stops rubbing as you open the, the door here. So everything works now, that's the, the clearance that it's got to have. And yeah, that's ready for paint. Now I've got to get the hardware installed uh, onto this one. And uh, so these are the, well, this is the bracket that came off of there and it's not rusted. So I think it's a, aluminum or something. So that's nice. The bracket that was originally installed on the motorhome that I own is this one where the bracket was rusted, but the rubber, this uh, like, you know, cloth reinforced rubber piece uh, is still viable. Um, so I'm gonna replace 
this rubber onto this bracket. And then I'm going to do the same on uh, this piece here, uh, where you can see how the rubber tore off and it's all, you know, coming apart. I wire brushed clean the, uh, the brackets and riveted them onto the um, fiberglass panels. And then I scrubbed this with a scrub brush and some water. So all of the parts are clean and ready to be installed. And I've already done the installation job on this side. So this is securely mounted. It's not going anywhere. Uh, yeah, but I do want to, uh, for some reason, there's kind of a curve. There's kind of a bend to this. So I'm gonna add some aluminum structure back in behind here to sort of suck that in like so. So I'm not quite done with this side yet. The color match is kind of hard to see through, but I think the skirts make it look more complete. I mean, the naked look is kind of cool too, because you can see that airbag, which is uh, some pretty nifty suspension that you don't find on any other vehicles, but uh, I think I like it better covered up and looking all classy. That's three more things off the checklist and I'm that much closer to getting the rig painted, getting it sprayed. So speaking of that, tune in next week. I'm gonna show you guys a little rendering that I've made uh, of my planned paint job. And yeah, of course, lots of little tasks still to do before the thing can get sprayed. So yeah, come on back. See you next Tuesday. Thanks for watching. See you then.